What's up, gastronomarians? As you may have guessed, I'm a big fan of beef and meat of all types. So today is a special day because I'm going to take you guys behind the scenes of my favorite butcher shop and see how they do it, see how the magic happens. Come on in, follow me. In three. Well, let's take a look at this case. Just do like a little pan across it. Lola. Cuts a order, man. Wow. But look, look at this little thing over here. I want you to zoom in over here. That thing right back there, see that, um, Yum. that ribeye back there? Product of Japan. That might be, could it be? Hey, does it actually have uh, any meat in it or is it just fat? So I'm Dennis. Jonathan. Jonathan, nice to meet you. Jonathan, nice to meet you. take me through this really quick. What, what do we have here? That's a patty machine. We're in the middle of making burgers. Nice. Um, nice. So it, it's it's a lot better than me doing this for half an well, hour. Well, it's a lot more efficient. It is. I like it. So that, thing, that thing makes uh, 60 patties a minute. How Whoa. much does this run so I can buy me something? That thing is uh, <laughs> 12,000. Okay, I will not be buying. Let's take a look over here. I see you got some nice strip steaks over here. Yes. Is that what I'm looking at? Yeah, that is a, that's a New York strip from the Carrera Ranch in um, Australia. Really? Yes. Very nice. So what kind of marbling score would you say that is? Uh, that's an MS9. MS9. Does this do well here? Do people, a lot of people yes. buy that? Yeah, we, like sell, we sell probably, I would say anywhere between 15 and 30 pounds of that a week. Nice, nice. And so... And same for the Japanese. And so, what do we have? What do we have here? No, that's a A5 Kobe beef from the Miyazaki region in Japan. Miyazaki. So Kobe beef? Question: Does not come from Kobe? So Kobe is a grading system in Japan. Yeah. So true, like true beef that comes from Kobe is also considered Kobe beef. Yeah. Kobe is actually the grading system in Japan. Yeah. Which is why you hear it used so loosely in the United States yeah. because we don't recognize it as a term. Right. So. You see people that have Kobe sliders on their menu all the time. Yeah, yeah. They aren't using Kobe beef yeah. on that slider, but they can they can put whatever they want in it because there's no governing body running around saying this isn't Kobe beef. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So if this makes sense, all Kobe beef is Wagyu, not all Wagyu beef is Kobe. Right. So Wagyu literally means WA means Japanese or ours. Yeah. And GYU uh, Q means cow. Yeah. So it literally means Japanese cow or our cow. Got it. So you. as long as as long as there is any Japanese heritage in the animal that they're raising anywhere around yeah. the world that we consider yes. Wagyu beef. Yes. So that's also why you hear it used so loosely. That is, this was raised in Australia. This was actually raised in Japan. So that was created on the Kobe grain Yes, system. yes. I have the nose print of that animal. It's for a certificate. So. Oh, wow, so you get all that. Now, that's quick cool. question. It's not going to matter if you can't read Japanese. So. I would love for you to shed some light on this situation because it is so debatable. So, okay. um, obviously, you got patties. I'm going to talk about burgers. So we actually did an episode where we put up a Wagyu ground beef versus just an American 80-20. Sure. And honestly, at the end of the episode, the Plain old American 20, 80, 20 from one. It yeah, had right. right flavor in it. I mean, is it, it all really on what I mean, use? It's 80, 20. Does it really it's matter that it's this? That. It does not. Yeah. Because it's already been chewed for. Right. It's already been put through a grinder. Exactly. So now you're just worrying about the fat content. Exactly. So it, if they weren't cooked exactly the same, or they didn't have the exact same fat content, to me, whatever has the higher fat content is going to win now. So, so yeah. you know, it's not worth it to pay no. much more money not for a wacky burger. No, unless you're just trying to show off your friends. Okay. Which is what a lot of the United States does. So that's why people buy it. Yeah. Mm. So, so let's get back to these strip steaks over here. The strip steaks are probably the most popular ones on the series. Definitely. And, well, so. This piece is open already. This is the other side of this piece. Okay? Yeah, yeah. So to us in the United States, this portion of this, this is called the New York Strip. Yes. So there was one whole piece here and another whole piece here. They, yeah. they cut a huge strip and they split them in half. So when I buy one strip, I get two pieces. Yeah. They also cut two bones into the ribs. So to us, that is a rib on. Yeah. But it's all labeled and graded as a New York yeah. Strip. Yeah, yeah. Because they call this piece, past here would be a rib on. Right, gotcha. So, gotcha. of the Japanese beef, we only sell this, and then we sell short ribs, which I have. I have boneless short ribs. You do have boneless, yeah. So this is an A5, or yes. I, I'm, is this an A5? Yes, it was created the exact same way. And it's short ribs. This is boneless short ribs. You can see where they actually took the ribs out of the piece. Of oh, wow. 
So what I would do with this is I would probably cut this right here mm -hmm. and then I would slice it on a deli slicer yes. or like that. Yes. And then what would you charge for pound? That stuff's not nearly as expensive as that. Yeah. Um, it's like 90 bucks a pound. So about bucks. $100 a pound cheaper than that. Mr. Darrell. Yes. Can you, can you fit? Would you folks like to watch us buy this from this fine gentleman and cook it for you guys in an episode? Sure. Yeah, I think I've had this, I've had this, I've had this, I have not had this. We bought steaks, okay? Right. Inch steaks. Right. It is just too rich to enjoy the whole steak. First of all, that's too thick of a steak. Yeah. I, and I would have cut a one inch steak from this. So you're, think, talk, you're talking about, about a piece of meat that's like that big. Yeah, it's not yeah. meant to be eaten like that, right? Right. So you're talking about a piece of meat that's like this. Yeah. So that piece of meat, that weighs a pound. I would say it's probably pretty close. You're pretty nervous so, at it, this, aren't you? That piece of meat, to me, would feed three or four people. Yes. Yes. So it's meant Unless to you're feeding meat. But, yeah. <laughs> like, yeah, that's what I would feed. I would, and how I would sell this in the case, or how uh, I'm going to sell it uh -huh. in the case, is I'm going to cut it like this uh, and then package it like that. Yeah. So we'll cry on that post pricing. Okay. So, because, and it, at $189 a pound. 189 a pound. It's a $220 yeah. steak. I yeah. Mean, I understand that for some people that is feasible, yeah. but for a lot that's not. It, it's it's not their like whole weekly food budget. It's an experience. Absolutely. It's an experience. How big of a piece do you want? Well, it's him and I, okay, and there's bones in it. No, there are no bones in it. It's boneless. Oh, this is boneless. Yeah, I took the bones out. A pound? Do you think a pound would be good for us? Let's yeah. do a pound. Let's figure out how to do it. That's a handy tool. Oh, that's it. lovely. But that's, that's the opposite way of the grain, okay? So the, the, piece, the grain is running this direction, which is why it kind of looks like that. So I'm going to cut you a piece of this. Let's see if I can guess what a pound will be. <laughs> that's yeah, it. So that's the mark I made one. Wow. This weighs more than a pound, I can tell you that. All right. Promote yeah, yourself, my name is Jonathan Dugdale, and I own Kincaid's Meat Market. You can find us at kincaidsmeatmarket.com. You can find us at Instagram at Kincaid's Meat Market, as well as Kincaid's Meat Market Fishers. Okay. Same with Facebook. Uh, it's our 100-year anniversary party on Sunday, August 15th. Come out and see Clayton Anderson. I'm going to be cooking food. So yeah, hope to see you guys there. Thank you, Kincaid's. This amazing A5 Wagyu Kobe short rib. I've never had short rib before, but I've decided that we are going to do this some justice. And we're going to make it three different ways. And I try to think of three kings of steak. So first thing I thought of, since this baby comes from Japan, is we're going to make an A5 short rib sushi. Are you with me on this one? That's one. Number two, I had to do this. We are going to marinate it in a Korean kalbi and make it a Korean kalbi short rib. Um, so that's going to be awesome. Let's see how the marinade takes to all this fat. And then third, I wanted to have a true essence. So let's go Argentinian and just have a nice Argentinian. Just bring the flavor out on the grill, add some salt and some nice chimichurri on the end. So that way, we're just gonna take this nice, beautiful piece that they bestowed onto us, and we're gonna give it the best treatment and bring it up as much as we possibly can. We're gonna make one into three, a trinity of love and A5 Kobe Wagyu. Let's begin! Woo!